The darkness takes its time. The only absolute power in this world is zombie takeout. Hello and welcome to Zombie Takeout, the B Moving Cult Movie Show. I'm John. And I'm Scotto. And before we get started, uh, just want to say happy Pride. Um, forgot it the first two weeks of uh, the month, getting it in just under the wire. Better late um, than never. Speaking of the first two weeks of the month, you did something on the first week of the month that I completely forgot to mention last week. Or we, we both forgot to mention last time we recorded two weeks ago. Uh, right. So we had this, um, we had tickets to a, a preview screening of the Mr. Rogers film. We went uh, a few weeks back. And right, it was just uh, the the whole reaction of the theater group was just, I, I don't know, we were just kind of mesmerized. This, I, I mean, I'd seen the documentary on PBS on him uh, that was on just a month earlier, hosted by Michael Keaton, who was one of his early stagehands. Oh, wow. I had no idea. <laughs> Yeah, it was a job he had when he was in college, you know, in their theater department. He just, you know, it was a Pittsburgh thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, the the, the char- characters that were surrounding him on the inside of the show too, really, and just a lot about him and his mm-hmm. life and and how he um, reacted to some of the the, yeah. the people that were poking fun at him too, even mm-hmm. in that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I've seen some documentaries recently because I think was it his birthday that was recently? I think I, so. Yeah, because Twitch did a whole marathon of his show, and there I've seen a number of documentaries. He was amazing. He yeah. was despite being incredibly religious, he was incredibly progressive as well. And I just did not know he was a minister. Yeah, um, and just you know, an amazing man. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing the movie. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's like a picture of him and Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Because <laughs> you know, Eddie Murphy did the Mr. Robinson's oh, neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. He was a fan of that one. Nice. <laughs> All right. So, on to this week's movie, which is uh, from one extreme to the other, um, from 2015, <laughs> Mythic of the Dark Spore. Of Mythica course, uh, Rogers' Neighborhood. <laughs> and this actually, this finishes the Critical Role two parter, which we kicked off a couple of weeks. We started a couple weeks ago with uh, Lord of the Duck. Um, this one um, co-stars in in a couple of short scenes. Uh, Matthew Mercer, the <laughs> EM from Critical Role, as the villain. Um, and this is also kicking off. And we never thought of a better name, so I'll just call it the Fantasy Shit Trilogy. Yeah, are we gonna actually get this trilogy done in a timely fashion, considering you know the summer? Well, we've, we're taking the next couple of weeks off. We always take the first week, first weeks in July off. The the podcast listeners know that, and then we'll we'll finish off July with the rest of this trilogy. All right. So on to the impromptu plot summary, sponsored by J.R. Tolkien. He didn't mean for any of this to happen. <laughs> and also brought to you by MacGuffins. Does a MacGuffin by any other name still drive a plot as sweet? Probably not. No. Uh and of course, the the reference of the, of both of our, our sponsors allude to mm. uh, this. This is such a Lord of the Rings knockoff. Oh, yeah, I yeah. mean, you can accuse Gygax and Dungeons and Dragons being your know, Lord of the Rings knockoff, but everything has been a Lord of the Rings. Ninety percent of fantasy has been a Lord of the Rings ripoff since Lord of the Rings. But even Harry Potter borrows, even though it's not a dead knockoff. But you know, it borrows. Th- this is, I mean. They just replaced the ring with the spore. <laughs> it's really, I mean, it's just really ridiculous. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure the Lord of the G strings had even more originality than, than this. I but anyway, that one. I got to revisit that scene. I like it. <laughs> um, we have, um, we have the chosen one, or I don't mm-hmm. know if she's the chosen one or not, but um, we no. have. Yes, we, <laughs> she is a, a dark mage, um, but uh, not sure of her powers yet. Not but sure of her learning. powers yet, right? And um, well, apparently, we really need to see the first one to get what the fuck was going on with uh, with some of this because um, 
Uh, I don't know. There was a flashback scene that I think kind of made the first movie unnecessary. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they pretty much give you the whole rundown of the first movie, kind of. Um, that that we know their cleric died, but the the cleric had a sister, and the sister doesn't really. Uh, well, is the sister going to forgive the party right. for letting the cleric die? Um, you just have to trust the goddess always. I, I have my notes. That I would have loved to have seen Samuel L. Jackson this one come in and say, <laughs> say trust the goddess always one more time. I <laughs> dare you. I double dog dare you. And, and we've got the fighter who is basically Chewbacca. Yeah, I'm not sure. Was he supposed to be a barbarian or a fighter? I, I just took him as a fighter, although barbarian, I guess, fits because he didn't really have proper armor. Nobody really had armor. He kind of um, had a mesh male yeah, yeah, kind now, of. The Soviet not, fighter. Not even necessarily a chain mail, but just like a mesh mail. A proper barbarian wouldn't be would just be wearing fur speedos. Yeah, he didn't um he probably didn't have the uh, physique for that, but yeah, you yeah. know, who does? Um, and then we have <laughs> either the rogue or the ranger. I'm not really sure what he was. Well, right. It was Aragorn's situation only instead of being serious and and dour mm -hmm. uh th this guy is the happy-go-lucky um since they didn't have any other races yeah and apparently he's an elf in more than know. one in more than one aspect of the term yeah, they yeah, didn't true. have any other races <laughs> even the fucking drow is played by a white guy yeah. <laughs> he's referred to uh, the, the the ranger rogue dude is referred to as an elf, even though you know he doesn't. You don't see his ears. Um, there's a fifth brief member of the party who has the elf ears, but they never establish that he's an elf. Well, yeah, the 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 brief member was an elf. I think oh, they yeah, they did say he's an elf. Okay, I, I think they were alluding to him being a dark elf, a drow. Oh, okay. Which... I did I did hear a reference to a dark elf. I wasn't quite sure who they were talking about. Who in Dungeons and Dragons? I mean, they they are. Dark, yeah, you know, physically dark, yeah, right, with white white hair. Yeah. Um, it, for the World of Warcraft players out there, um, the night elves are based visually on drought. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, but I think our the rogue here is a half elf. Okay, because he's referred to as an elf, but you can't really see his ears. He just looks yeah. like a normal human. The elf called him out on that, uh -huh. <laughs> like being a half breed. <laughs> well, yeah, he's a half breed. Okay, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, right, they, of course, they're the party. Uh, they stay together because, I mean, what party doesn't stay together in right. these films? And, and they try to split a few times, but it never really works. Yeah, what is it with movies where they try to split up and they don't really split up? <laughs> the slime ball, ball rama. Well, well there was <laughs> the, 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 we should split up, but then there's, the, there were um, the, the, the fighter Thane and the, the, the ranger rogue um, Dagan, like, coming to blows a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> and they still never split up. Right. I, I, you know, and for some reason, there's no dwarves or anything like this. And then well, either, um, Hammerhead. I guess because that would be silly. I don't Hammerhead, know. Hammerhead, our man looked like a dwarf. Oh. He's, the old, he's one of the few actors, one of the actors aside from the party who are in all the movies. This is a series. I'll get to that later. Um, oh, yeah. This is actually, I'll, I'll actually say that now. Uh, this is the sequel to Mythica, A Quest for Heroes. Each movie in the series was kickstarted. This one raised just over 81 grand uh, with a goal of 75 grand. What? How are they making movies for 81 grand? Shane Carith did it for what? Three grand? <laughs> but yeah, yeah they but made, these all you are need... fantasy films. With, with, um, I mean, the special with, effects weren't like overwhelming or anything. After of course. Effects. But it was uh, rubber masks and after effects. But, uh, but <laughs> I mean, gears. the costuming it alone, at least. Yeah, I the mean, leather pants were kind of expensive. I, Literally, everyone in the party is wearing leather pants except the, the priestess, who, of course, has the toga rocking. Yeah. Anyway, so they try to split a few times. So they go on this quest, um, and none of this makes any sense. Uh, they go on a quest for the Dark Spore. To keep the dark spore away from um, the big bad heavy yeah, Zorlock, despite it being protected pretty fucking well in the first yeah, place by a dragon, <laughs> by a dragon. So their quest was pretty stupid because it just led 
the big bad heavy to the dark spore, <laughs> and, and they did his bidding for him. Uh, you can almost say hilarity ensues at this point, can't you? <laughs> so it's the you plot. Any fantasy fiction, you can pretty much know, you know what's going to happen. It, it was absolutely ridiculous. They should have never gone on this quest. They should have said, oh, <laughs> it's in the dragon. Cool. Our work's done. Let's get out of here. Those are pretty smart ways to hide a dark spore. Right? <laughs> Go and... get it yourself, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see you try. <laughs> And then the, just the rest of the movie is Richard, evil Richard O'Brien and, and the, you know, lumbering Nazgul um, <laughs> trying to get past the dragon while the rest of the party just sits there eating popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> and so the movie starts with this rando, random guy who is clearly a mage. Yeah. Basically playing ring around the portal. You know, there's there's the, the square, you know, portal, you know, the, the Stonehenge looking portal. That he walks around and then it opens up. He walks through it. If and, only they had the money for the rights to like some conga music or yeah, uh, yeah. Buster Poindexter, you know. <laughs> but yeah, you know, he doesn't. He walks in. The dragon rears up and immediately eats him. Yeah, it was hilarious. <laughs> it was very Python. It was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And then we get the flashback that um, you know, in real, you know, completely makes the first movie unnecessary. And then we get a scene with Marek, um, the 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 chosen one, where she's about to kill a rabbit, and then they cut to it on a spit, like yeah. the most overtly low budget shot. <laughs> I was expecting Matthew Mercer, um, Sherlock, to be the best part of the movie because he was very entertaining. He has like two scenes, but he's trying to raise this, you know demon or something with the with this heart and the dark spore. I think the dark spore was the heart. Yeah. But he's in this chamber with these monks stealing a heart, and even the chanting monks are overacting. Oh, of course. And they're posing. I mean, they're like and, putting rhythm into it and shit. It's like, is this a uh, cantation or a Broadway musical number? <laughs> <laughs> and they're posing and pouting. It's, it's brilliant. And then there's a damn smoke monster. How are there no midnight showings of this shit? I mean, really, yeah. they show the room to this day, which you understand, and they show Rocky still. Mm -hmm. But you need a little variety, and I think this series, yeah, oh, deserves absolutely. a midnight showing. I'm going to say it out right now. I, I want to see the rest of them. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and and we we can't even blame paychecks because it was eighty one grand, right? I, I still don't understand how they did this for 81. Like, Sorbo probably at least wanted oh, yeah. 75,000. <laughs> for his merciful, like, two scenes. Yeah. And, and that, that is what made this better, isn't it? Because he just... He's I don't terrible. Think he, made, he made it worse for me. I was yeah. happy to see him go. Oh, definitely. He's a worse actor than I thought he was. Yeah, I spoiled my, what have I learned? But yeah, um, I gotta <laughs> say, um, Jake Stormone, who played Dagon, the Ranger uh, Rogue, was a pretty good actor. Yeah, um, and I, I think the map, the map on the cylinder was clever. <laughs> There's a cylinder that has you know, these bumps on it. They, they <laughs> dip it in ink and roll it on, on a parchment, and, and there's a map. I thought it was a clever idea. I, if I don't say, uh, you know what the stone with all the bumps looks like, right? <laughs> Oh, right, a rolling pin. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I, of all people, didn't think about that. I mean, they're holding it up, and I was kind of like, <laughs> really? Oh, so, just a, okay. Where did they get that prop from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, just a quick note about Matthew Mercer, who played Sherlock, um, the, the DM on Critical Role. Um, very um, successful voice actor. Like many voice actors, he's done countless things. Um, considered one of the most highly respected DMs there is. Like, he has invented classes that Wizards officially recognizes. So, you know, he's very successful in other areas, but this is his only live action work. Who knew you'd be successful at that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Maybe I should have well, stuck with it. <laughs> no, he also voice acts, and he's a great voice actor. Yeah. Very yeah. successful. But this is the only live action work he's done. And I mean, he is one of the high points of the movie, but. It had, oh, to be early on, it had to be early in his career. Um, speaking of, of it's high only points... only a few years ago, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. It's only um, like three years ago, I think. That's true. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe he just was friends with somebody and he thought it would be good for a laugh. Yeah. Um, speaking of high points, I just love how the bargain basement Nazgul just lumber 
<laughs> like the most bored walk you can imagine, led by this Richard O'Brien wannabe. <laughs> Actually, I think it's um, and another time we reference Richard O'Brien, the bald guy from the actual D and D movie. Oh yeah, looks like him. I think there was a bald guy there too. Um, and apparently they couldn't afford horses. <laughs> Did they have two coconuts? Actually, there was one horse in the movie. Yeah. It was a brief scene of somebody riding away. I forget who. Um, I, I thought it was going to be another Lord of the Rings situation, but no, they just walk everywhere. Well, right. Yeah. They just walk in that in one direction, just like the Lord of the Rings movie. Uh-huh. And uh, even though this was a good, what, hour shorter, yeah. they still could have lopped a good half hour <laughs> off this. Um, I, I will say getting the pixies high to rescue Cole was, was funny. <laughs> they burn some kind of leaf and it get they look like wisps until you get a close up in their pixies. Yeah. And then this character Cole is, is all, you know, encased in webbing. They burn this leaf to get the pixies high so they can rescue Cole. Knock them out, yeah. And I loved the line, what is he just stand around lifting rocks all day when they <laughs> get him out of the webbing because he's ripped. <laughs> Well, I mean, most uh, D and D characters are going to be. I mean, yeah, yeah. shouldn't the barbarian be <laughs> in better shape? That's why he's not a barbarian. He's a fighter. If he was ripped, he'd have been dressed like Cole when they first found him. Yeah. Um, and and I uh, speaking of Thane, the fighter, a uh, uh, barbarian, whatever. I, I loved how he went Irish on filth and shite and beggars when describing, you know, the town he came from. But yeah. then he went right back to being American. <laughs> Costnering the accent. <laughs> you just on that one word or one or two words, but very. Oh hard. yeah. I will say I didn't expect Merrick to get away from the bounty hunters. I thought that was going to be a whole side quest. Uh, they had so much already, though. I mean, it was it was completely unnecessary to have the bounty hunters in there. Honestly, <laughs> I, I, that's why it surprised me because I thought it was going to be a side quest. Um, but no, she gets away very quickly, and they just move on. Yeah. Into um, this haunted um, night. What, what, what did I call it in, in that one intro? Um, the uh, the the night springs, which was basically just a corn maze. The face and oh, the fears I have in my notes. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> um, it's a <laughs> corn field. The it's apparently these night springs. They're walking just through a cornfield with a bunch of fake fog, and they're yeah. attacked by people with masks. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm just gonna put this out there now. Um, it's not a good movie by any means, but I nope. enjoyed the hell out of it. Nope. Um, I liked it until like the ending kind of pissed me off a bit. Uh, we'll get to that. Um, um, there, there's a lot of nice, nice little things in there. There's um, the Star Wars line you hear in the background in one scene. No, this one goes there, and that <laughs> one goes there. Uh, um, and of course, then we find out that Merrick is a necromancer who can't control her powers. Yeah, and so she's ex- she's unintentionally siphoning the lives of her party. She's referred to as a cripple um, yeah, because she apparently has a club foot, though we never see it. But in the days of swords and no medicine, wasn't everyone a cripple pretty much? Well, that too, and Isn't... and she she they say she she was a slave. Uh, and they mentioned her, her, you know, someone's trying to buy her, but they find that she ran away midway through the movie. Um, and they say, say she has a like a club foot, though she's walking perfectly normal. I don't see. She walks feet. normal for most of the film. There's some scenes where she walked with the limp when it was spoken uh, about. Okay. I didn't catch um, that. It wouldn't have been weirder for someone to not have a limp back then, though. I mean, just yeah. well, <laughs> I mean, walk, <laughs> walking around in perfect health. Oh. It's well, the Middle it, Ages. How many cheap fantasy movies have that trope, though? <laughs> have, have young, pretty people playing, you know, Middle Ages characters? Well, right, right. But then for them to point out the fact that, oh, and this one's got yeah, a limp. She, yeah, she's got a clipfoot, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I do think that that um, Merrick using her necromancy uh, uh, was tipping off the villains of where they were was a nice twist on Frodo putting on the ring. Yeah, for putting on the ring. It was just a nice twist. Um, the, you know, one of my titles was was uh, "Larping with After Effects." That's what this movie is. Yeah, it's a larp with After Effects. It, you know, it's it's just a lot of walking and a lot of bad, act, questionable acting. I do think the actors in the party did have good chemistry. Yeah, you know, that that's they did because it was fun to watch that group. 
Yeah, definitely. And, and I, I think the acting was a lot better than I expected it to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, we see Sorbo in the beginning. You're like, oh my god, this is going to be so fucking awful. <laughs> and then, this... like, the players in it were like, oh, yeah. they're they're pretty good. They're enjoyable. This, all of this them. This was the week of, my, of of pleasant surprises for me. Almost um, all of them. The priestess was a bit annoying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I loved Cole trying to meditate while Thane and Dagon were beating the shit out of each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the, then, cl the cleric is pretty damn annoying in this. And and then they get this, the actual side quest, which, you know, going through the cave to get the thing. And, of course, it was a, a cave that was strong in the dark side. Oh, yes. Another Star Wars reference. <laughs> And how do they not expect a giant treasure to be guarded by a dragon? Have they not read any fantasy? <laughs> it, it is the, the smartest place to hide something if you want to keep it away. And, and, and dragons in lore, in most cases, hoard gold. Yeah. That's what they do. So that's why they're often guarding treasures. Um, I, 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 I'm also wondering why they weren't connected to, by a rope when they got out of the tunnel, that the, you know, away from the dragon, because they were tied <laughs> to each other to, to make sure nobody fell for the, the, the dark side of the, the whole dark side. Up, eh, who cares? Yeah, the rope was gone when they, you know, finally managed to surface. Perhaps you could run away a bit more, sir. <laughs> Another surprise, I didn't expect Cole to turn on them. I probably was just pulled into the story too much to really see it coming. Yeah, because they looked at each other before they entered the cave and everything, and they, oh, they, they tipped that hand pretty well. All right, I didn't get you. Um, I, I also liked Cole kind of gently trying to stop Dagon from attacking him, because Dagon's coming after him because he double-crossed them, even though he was yeah. you know making part of the deal that they live. And Dagon's coming after him, and Cole's just kind of gently pushing him aside with his sword and knocking him over. <laughs> I dug that. Um Overall, I, I, the fight choreography wasn't bad for the budget. Yeah. It was passable. Um, I, I like that Thane got his Boromir moment. <laughs> he was just being pelted with arrows and just fighting to the last. <laughs> but uh, the ending, though. Okay, I, have, I, I kind of like the end. Well, which, we'll get into which part of the ending, because my issue with the ending, which I kind of think is funny... She gets 600 gold and completely forgets and stops caring that Zorlok has the dark spore. Right. Well, uh, yeah, there's that. I, I mean, I think we all did stopped caring that he had the dark oh, spore, yeah. honestly. Because they need like, more movies. Oh, well, sequel there, yeah, you know. Exactly. I, I think, uh, but just the healing and all that, and every almost everybody getting out alive, I mean. Uh, uh, Cole was the only. Um, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Um, casualty. Red shirt. He's a casualty. Because no, he double crossed no him. Shirt, yeah. Red yeah. Well, except he didn't have a red shirt. <laughs> oh, he was wearing a shirt for the rest of the movie, wasn't he? Yeah, he just oh, yeah, that opening was. scene. Yeah, he I was only so. gratuitously shirtless for that opening but when yeah. they said it. Um, but yeah, um, they, of course, it's a happily ever after. You know, they, they get the money, they get out there, they get out of there. They Most of them survive. They forget that. Um, you know, Sorlock has the dark spore now and can become can raise the evil demon or whatever it is. That's that's another movie to you mm -hmm. know. To and worry then about. there was what I thought was going to be a nice small sequel. Um, you know, um, Marek takes the six hundred gold and tries to buy her freedom, and someone shows up with a claim on her, saying, you know, he's her slave, he owns her, and she goes with him. She's forced to leave with him to be to become his property. I thought that was going to be the next movie, the, the quest to save Merrick. But no, they very, uh, Dagon and Thane very quickly just break into his place and threaten to slit his throat and cut off his junk if he doesn't sign our freedom. Yeah, what kind of party is this? Why don't they fucking just do it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. He signed away. He signed the thing. So all right. it ended ultimately happy. Um, sequels and remakes? See, no, we know. Yeah, we know. <laughs> sequels. Um, there are sequels. Uh, like I said, this is a sequel to Mythica, The Quest for Heroes. The third film is Mythica, The Necromancer. I'm guessing that's about Merrick. Um, that, that was released in 2015. The fourth film also... Um, oh, the third and fourth were both in 2015. Um, the This one... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting confused. This one and Necromancer were both 2015. Wow. The, the fourth film, Iron Crown, uh, was really... Mythica, The Iron Crown, because they're all Mythica. Um, was released in 16, as was the final film, Mythica the God Slayer. 
So five films in all. And a remake would be if they just do another Lord of the Rings. Yeah, basically, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's you know um, the Necromancer next, obviously. Um, Marek, the Iron Crown, probably Mar- uh, um, Zorlock ascending to some kind of throne, becoming a god. I'm guessing because he's the god that gets slain in the last one. I'm I'm just spitballing here. On to brains. On to brains. It was. A, it's a horrible movie. Yes, it is an overt Lord of the Rings ripoff, but I had a blast with it. I'm going for. Uh, I was at three, but uh, I've taken off one for for yeah, cheeses. I think so. Two for me. All right, and what have we learned? Oh man, why why would anybody pay Kevin Sorbo to be in anything? <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> why did they waste any of that eighty one thousand dollars on yeah. that dude? Because he's what got them the eighty one grand, saying he's going to be in the movie if we raise enough money. Um, and again, it's a long, long tomorrow lines as I spoiled earlier. Um, Kevin, I learned that Kevin Sorbo is an even worse actor than I thought. And I watched Andromeda and a fair amount of you know Hercules and Athena. But he's yeah, I watched, I'd say I watched more Andromeda than Hercules. Hercules. Yeah, same here. I, I watched pretty much all of Andromeda, but he was never that bad on Andromeda. It just came, it was just the show that came on like after whatever we were watching at the time, and we see, just didn't shut the TV off. And- see, I actively liked Andromeda. Granted, I had a, a bit of a crush on the chick who played the purple chick who played trance. Um, but I, I thought he was okay. Huh? No, well, no, uh, that's no, not not trance was the purple chick who had some kind of magical power. Oh. Um, I kind of bit of a crush on her. Um, or about Bellamy, I think it was the actress's name. Um, Alexa Doig was the computer. Um, she was on a couple of other of those syndicated shows. Anyway, um, I, I watched a lot of that actively. Enjoyed the show. Was shocked at how bad Sorbo was in here. I guess he can't phone in a performance. Yeah, that's probably what this was. Yeah, he Just, was legitimately right. invested in the earlier stuff. He phoned it's like, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, David Hyde Pearson, the, the last yes. Wet Hot American Summer. Right, yeah, exactly, exactly. Did you get all that? Is that mm-hmm. enough? <laughs> anyway, that's it for Mythic of the Dark Spore. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't. I think we mentioned earlier, Earlier, we're off for the next two weeks um, because we always take the first two weeks of July off. Um, April 4th, um, April 4th, um, July 4th here in the U.S., uh, Independence Day, and your birthday is the 6th. So, That's true. Um, in, in the, on the Saturday in between, there will be a Lane episode, um, a Lane review, uh, and we'll be back on the 18th when we'll be reviewing Sorceress continuing the uh, fantasy trilogy. This is our first Skidamax movie and our first Julie Strain movie. It'll it'll hopefully be just as entertaining as Mythica. <laughs> Until then, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. are.